On this episode, I make these cast iron cylinders from scratch. Welcome to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. I'm cutting the cylinders from 65mm cast iron round. There's a number of steam passages that need to be drilled and machined in this part. These include the passages between the steam chest and the cylinders, the steam inlet and the exhaust. The other major feature of these cylinders is the shaping to the outside. The first step is to cut the material to size. For this I'm using the horizontal bandsaw. With the material cut, it's over to the mill to rough out the square faces. At this point the two cylinders are in one block to increase the speed of machining. I'm using a 14mm roughing end mill, running at about 300 rpm. Once I have the first flat cut, I rotate the block and locate it against the fixed jaw. This is repeated until I have four flat faces. I'm removing precise amounts of material from each side of the block. This maximises the material usage for the shape I'm cutting out of the round. For the finishing cuts, I use a smaller end mill, in this case an 8mm. The smaller end mill allows a faster RPM while maintaining the same surface feet per minute with the faster RPM giving a better finish. Once one side is complete, the block is flipped and the process repeated on the other side. Once that's complete, it's back to the horizontal bandsaw, splitting the block into two separate parts. The next step is to machine the block to final length, once again on the mill using a roughing end mill. Once the excess material has been removed, I can shift focus to boring the cylinder. The centre is located accurately using an edge finder, zeroing the digital readout on each face. The radius of the edge finder is then subtracted to get the true zero point. I've looked at multiple options for boring the cylinders, including boring them on the lathe, but I came to the conclusion that it'd be simpler to drill and ream the, the cylinder bores. This avoids any spring with the tooling, which is inherent with using a boring bar. I slowly work through the drill sizes, increasing the diameter until I'm just under size for the reamer. I'm using an adjustable reamer today, but I'd have to say the fixed size machine reamers I've used in the past have been far easier. The next step is to do the bolt hole pattern or PCD pitch circle diameter. I accurately locate the centre of the bore using a test dial indicator, then set the bolt hole function on my digital readout. This requires several inputs, radius, start angle, end angle and number of holes. Then we can move to the first hole, moving the table to zero, x and y. Then each hole is drilled and tapped before moving to the next hole. Once again as we cycle through each hole, we move the table to zero, x and y for each hole location.
Once the holes are complete on one side, I take the cylinder over to the bench and use a cylinder hone to hone the inside of the bore and remove any machining marks. Then the part can be returned to the mill, with the centre accurately being located using the test dial indicator again. Then once again, the bolt hole function is utilised again on the digital readout, with the holes being drilled and tapped. As always I'm using a spring tapping guide to aid with the tapping. I must say since I started using a spring tapping guide I've had a lot less broken taps so it's well worth the small investment. The next step is to drill the holes and machine the steam passages. To do this I first accurately locate the corner of the fixed jaw of the mill vise. I can then use this as a fixed reference for locating the holes in my parts. Ports milled using a 3mm end mill, doing passes of 1mm at a time until I get to the 5mm depth. The central exhaust port connects with the hole previously drilled, and the two side ports have holes drilled between there and the end of the cylinders, which I'll get to shortly. Once the ports are complete, I drill a steam chest mounting holes. The steam inlet is two interconnecting holes, first drilled here on the port face and the second on top. Once holes are tapped for the steam inlet port, I mill a recess for mounting the smoke box, then finish up some of the shaping around the steam exhaust. I use an adjustable angle block to align the holes to form the steam passages from the cylinder to the steam ports. The final feature to be machined is the exterior shape of the cylinder. For this I've machined a mandrel to match the inside diameter of the cylinder. The cylinder is clocked to zero using a digital angle gauge, with the rotary table being set to zero also. This allows accurate control of the shaping. The setup I'm using here is similar to the gear cutting setup I had in the last episode, just without the indexing plates. This includes a rotary table with a collet chuck and a tailstock.
Once the shaping was complete, it was off the mill and over to the bench. I use a 90 degree die grinder for the sanding disc to clean and smooth the shaping. Then finish up with some emery cloth by hand. I trial fit the cylinders and they fit perfectly. The next step from here will be the steam chest which is shared by the two cylinders, joining them together. Keep an eye out for this in an upcoming episode. I think these turned out really successfully, but this being the first time I tried machining cast iron. It machined really well and I really enjoyed using it, though the clean up is certainly a lot more work than with other metals. Thanks for watching, please like, subscribe and share, catch you next time.